Hello everyone. In this lecture today, I'm going to talk to you about immunohistochemistry, its principle and the techniques of how this immunohistochemistry is performed in the lab. Okay? So, let me begin. Immunohistochemistry. The word immunohistochemistry, it consists of three words. Okay? One is immuno and the other one is histo and the last one is chemistry. Okay? So, the immuno, it means antibody because in this process we use antibody. Okay? So, that's why it's immuno means something related to immune system and in this method we use antibody. Okay? To detect antigen. That's why immuno. Histo. Why histo? Because this method is performed on tissues, in tissue sample, okay, histo, histo refers to tissue, that's why this is, this is histo. And chemistry, why chemistry? Chemistry because in this method there is chemical interaction between antibody and the antigen, okay, so there is this chemical interaction between antibody and antigen which is detected, that's why immunohistochemistry. Okay, so now you know that why immunohistochemistry is immunohistochemistry. What is the meaning? The literal meaning of immunohistochemistry is immuno means immunity or immunoantibody, histo means tissue, and chemistry means chemical interaction between antibody and antigen. Okay, so this is the uh, literal meaning of immunohistochemistry. So then, uh, what is the definition of this? The definition is immunohistochemistry or simply it is called IHC. It is a method that is that is used to identify specific antigens. Okay, this method it is used to identify specific antigens within the tissue sections, within the tissue sections, and how by using an antigen specific antibody. Okay, and that can be visualized under the microscope. Okay, so what is immunohistochemistry? Immunohistochemistry is a method to identify specific antigens present in the tissue sections utilizing an antigen specific, that particular antigen specific antibody. Okay, so this is the definition of <coughs> immunohistochemistry. Now that I have covered the definition of the meaning and definition of immunohistochemistry, now I want to talk to you about what is the techniques, what is the whole procedure of immunohistochemistry. In the immunohistochemistry, first and the most one of the most important step is to prepare the sample. And while preparing sample, we have to prepare the sample in a way that we minimize non-specific signals. Okay, so this is the um, first step is the preparation of the sample. And the second step, second step is called antigen retrieval. And the meaning of which is that we have to unmask the epitope. Okay, so we have to make the epitope of the antigen available for antibody to bind. Okay, so that's called unmasking of the epitope. This is called antigen retrieval. Okay, and the other, the next step is the block, block, blocking step in which we block the background. Why we block the background? We block the background to minimize non-specific signals. Okay. And the fourth step is the de detect the target. That means we want to detect the target antigen by using specific antibody, okay, for, for that particular target. That's the detect the target. And final step is that we, we visualize, this, visualize the sample. That means we capture the tissue images on a microscope, okay. So then immunohistochemistry technique, it involves um, the steps uh, starting from preparation of the sample, followed by retrieval of the antigen and blocking of blocking of the background, detection of the target antigen and finally visualization. Okay, so these are the different steps involved in immunohistochemistry technique. Okay, so now I have briefly given you the overview. I want to now talk each steps in depth. First step is the sample preparation step. We have to prepare the sample, like I said before, in such a way that we minimize these non-specific signals. So for the preparation of the samples, we have to choose the right fixation method because we have to fix these tissues, tissue samples. Uh, one method is frozen acetone fixed tissue is the best choice when the expression of antigen is high. For example, the antigen that we want to detect, that expression is high. Then we can use frozen acetone fixed tissue. The most, one of the most commonly used method is formalin fixed or paraffin embedded, okay, samples. They give the best results when cell morpho morphology is to be preserved, okay. We want, if we want, if we want to preserve cell morphology, then um, this formalin fixed paraffin embedded samples is, is, is the best uh, method to use 
um, to fix the samples. Okay. So then the next step is the antigen retrieval. What is antigen retrieval? Antigen retrieval is the antigen unmasking is, is necessary. So especially for formalin fixed paraffin embedded samples prior to antibody labeling, okay, prior to antibody addition. Why? Because the tissue fixation process is typically causes cross-linking of the proteins, okay? Tissue fixation process is causes the cross-linking of the proteins. And therefore, then we want to re-expose the epitopes on the antigen, okay? So we want to re-expose the epitopes on the antigen. Cross-linking of the proteins, it hides the epitope. Right. Therefore, we want to re-expose the epitope on the antigen, and this will allow anti-antibody -anti binding. Okay, when the when the epitope is re-exposed, re this will allow the antibody to bind to the antigen. Okay, but this step is not necessary for frozen or fresh fresh tissue. Okay, for, for frozen and fresh tissue, this antigen retrieval step is not necessary. So, what is antigen retrieval? We want to make the epitope available for the antibody to bind. And especially this method is used in formalin fixed paraffin embedded samples because in these tissue fixation process, the cross-linking of the proteins occurs and the epitope is hidden. So we want to re-expose it. Okay. So this is the antigen retrieval. Antigen masking in formalin fixation of the cells is due to the chemistry. Okay. But can be easily reversed. Okay. So how we can do this antigen retrieval? Antigen retrieval can be done by heat. This is the most common method, actually, up to 95, 96 degrees Celsius temperature. I don't remember exactly, but it's about 90 degrees used uh, uh, to, to do this antigen uh, retrieval. Okay, and also the, the, you know, some people use simple buffer treatments or protease digestion. So these are the few methods that can be used uh, for the antigen retrieval. Okay, so now. I have talked about antigen retrieval. The next step is the blocking the background. That means that we want to minimize the non-specific signals. Okay. So then, because in our tissue samples there might be the presence of endogenous enzymes such as peroxidase and alkaline phosphatase, and endogenous and endogenous antibody can result in false positive signaling. Okay. So that's why it's important to block. Okay, because of these uh, endogenous enzymes, actually, they can result in false and positive staining. <laughs> so, uh, these uh, background staining, they can even mask the detection of the target antigen. They can even mask the detection of the target antigen. And so, so by blocking, okay, by blocking, what we are doing, actually, we are uh, reducing the non-specific binding of even secondary antibodies, okay, by adding a blocking step. We are also reducing the non-specific binding of secondary antibodies, not only the primary, but also the secondary antibody. Okay, so that's why it's really important to block. So how the samples can be blocked? Samples can be blocked by incubating with a, with a buffer that blocks non-specific sites. Okay, that blocks the non-specific sites with which the primary or the secondary antibodies may otherwise bind. Simply, we, we, we incubate these samples with the, with, the, with the blocking buffer and this will block non-specific sites and hence the, the primary and secondary antibody will not bind to those non-specific sites because these sites have already been blocked. Okay, so this is the blocking steps. Why? To minimize non-specific signals. Okay, so now the next step is the detection step. Uh, we want to detect the target antigen by with an antibody. Okay, that's the, the, the um, that is the detection, okay, by using secondary antibody. Specific antibody label the target protein in the tissue. One method is the direct detection, where in the permanent, uh, the primary antibody, you know, we, we, we um, conjugated primary antibody is used. And the indirect, indirect uh, detection is that we have the primary antibody that binds to the antigen, and we have the secondary antibody that binds to the uh, primary antibody, and it has the secondary antibody is conjugated with conjugated. So this is indirect detection. This actually amplifies the signal. Okay. So for example, conjugated with horse redis peroxidase, for example. Okay. These, these are sub substrate. So the visualize the sample. And finally, uh, the, the visualization of the sample. So how we want to capture the tissue images on, on, on a microscope. Okay. We want to capture these tissue images on a microscope. How we can do that? For this, we need to seal the sample. How by mounting um, a cover slip with an appropriate mounting solution. This mounting solution can be organic or aqueous. Okay, we have to decide which one to use, right? So, and 
there are two ways of detection okay so in fluorescent based detection method um, antibody bound to the antigen of interest in the tissue is directly or indirectly conjugated to the fluorophore okay so indirectly or indirectly conjugated to the fluorophore sometimes called fluorochrome a molecule that fluoresces in the presence of um, light of a specific wavelength this is fluorescent based detection method in fluorescent based detection method antibody bound to the antigen of interest in the tissue is directly or indirectly conjugated to a fluorophore or also sometimes called fluorochrome, a molecule that fluoresces in the presence of a light of a specific wavelength. And there is another method of detection, and that method is called colorimetric method. In this colorimetric method, the bound primary or secondary antibody is conjugated to a substrate, okay? One is conjugated to a fluorophore, the other is conjugated to a substrate, and this substrate yields a precipitate product, okay, when converted by an enzyme, okay? This substrate yields a precipitate product when converted by, by an enzyme. And this precipitase is actually visible as a colored staining when viewed by light microscopy. So there are two methods of detection, okay? So fluorescent-based method and chlorimetric method. These two methods, they come actually in the detection part, okay? And after this detection, the final is the visualization that is done in the microscope. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you.